ready. Yeah. Well, isn't that clever, John? That was Sarah's idea. Very clever. Hey, Tim, that, okay. that was you. Well, I just got in the extra you know, six inches, so we'll see. Uh, Bible. Let me read the, at least the, the gospel. I'm not going to read John. Oh, got to be a Bible here somewhere, right? Yes. Somewhere in the sanctuary we can find at least one. <laughs> it's new, of course. This never been open. Never been open. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So I did, um, uh, when Sarah asked me to do the sermon, um, she said, just do the one that you preached last week, you know, because we'll have that one somewhere here to preach and so we can compare it and all that. And so I've um, I shared that. Oh, I didn't have to. <laughs> they had the candidate come in. He was preaching. but So I, I wrote it as if it was last week. So we right. talked a little about the Super Bowl. but So much for getting last week off for you. But right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I, had to, I had to crunch it in. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. Okay. So at least this is what I don't. I don't know what, what your practice is here, but um, at least where I'm at, that, uh, we have a, the um, assistant minister or the liturgist reads the other scriptures and I read the gospel. That's just the way that we do it. It works for me. So anyway, I'd like to... <coughs> so he's got a, I'll, I'll, start with, I'll start with that. So... Uh, <laughs> so a reading from the Gospel of Luke. Reading from the fourth chapter. Then he began to say to them, Today, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. So all spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. Small print, excuse me. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, do hear also in your hometown the things you have heard, the things we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Seraphath, in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elijah, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, they drove him out of the town and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed away through the midst of them and went on his way. Gospel. <clears throat> well, I'm glad to see that some of you showed up today. <laughs> yes, I know. I know the Super Bowl doesn't start for another five and a half hours, but uh, I'm sure that you will agree with me that that's a great opportunity for people to say, and, and not to do anything else all day. They don't want to miss the game. Right? So I have to tell you at least one Super Bowl joke. So this uh, surprise to see an empty seat at the Super Bowl stadium, the man's mentioned to the woman who was nearby about this empty seat. And, and she said, um, well, it, it, was, it was my husband's seat, she commented to him, but, but he died. You know, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. But, but you know, I, I am surprised that, that none, none, no relatives or friends took advantage of his seat being empty and, and weren't here, to, you know, didn't you know, fight over each other to get to the seat. She goes, yeah, I know. It beats me. They all insisted on going to the funeral. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the diehard fans. Anyway, I'm glad that you chose to come here this morning and be today and be, with us, be with us in church. So, well, today's reading. Today's reading is a it's a made-for-TV drama. It's a made-for-TV gospel. It's a great script for a movie or for a, a detective novel. I mean, first you have, right, you've heard that at first they're accepting of this prophet, and then they start to doubt him, and then they challenge him, and then they reject him, and then, and then they get to this stage of hate with the intent to kill him. Right? But then, then he 
he escapes mysteriously. So where is Quentin Tarantino? Where is J.A. Jantz for this great drama? Well, it's a great script. It's a great script, but of course, the gospel isn't made for the TV movies. It's not made for the detective novel. It's made for us. And so we have to take a little bit closer look at it. So we begin by, by noting that Jesus preaches the acceptable year of the Lord. And now, the acceptable year of the Lord is a technical term, right? It means that uh, there's a time of jubilee, when among other things, the, the Roman occupation, the Roman rule will be, will be um, overthrown, and the taxes will be gone, and that's a great thing. I mean, that's a good thing to celebrate. The tax, no more taxes, just imagine. You'd be pretty happy about that. But, it, it, see, this is where the crowd really gets riled, right? Jesus says he's also going to have to include as favorable to God the Gentiles, the other folks. And then he mentions specifically Gentiles like uh, Nathan, Naaman, who's a leper. It doesn't matter that he's a general. He's a Gentile. And also the widow from Zarephath. They're being saved also. And, and for several reasons they get upset. I mean, for first of all, this... Uh, these words shatter their notion of privilege. All of a sudden, they don't necessarily have this lock on God's favor, on access to God. And secondly, these words of Jesus, they broke down the officially sanctioned barriers of hatred. They said, it's okay to hate these guys. And he breaks them down, right? He challenges them to see others as brothers and sisters of the same God. wasn't how things are supposed to be, right? And so what did they do? They decided, well, let's kill the messenger, right? We often go there. If we don't like the message, and we get the person who brings us the message. And what's our reaction? Our reaction to this whole scene, it could be easily be, right, as we're looking at, at those people, well, those poor, ignorant, stupid, narrow-minded people, how can they not see it? Jesus' reaction to that scene, I might imagine, would be to, to look at us and ask, those? <laughs> what do you mean, those? You are those. We are those. The fact is, you know, people reject prophets all the time. You know, by prophets, we shouldn't understand just those people who foretell the future. Biblically, the, the prophets are more, they're more like those who tell the truth about the present in the of God. <laughs> So we don't, we don't want to hear the truth. Often we don't want to hear the truth. We're, we're kind of like the man, uh, the man whose doctor said, decided that he really had to tell the truth about this guy because he was, he was sick. He was going to die. And so, the, and so the doctor says, you know, I, I just have to tell you this because you're really a sick man, a very sick man, and, and chances are that you probably won't live more than a few more weeks, maybe a couple months at most. And so you, you're really going to have to, I really urge you to get your, you know, your affairs in order and if there's anything I can do, is there anyone that I can call for you? And the man said, yes, yes, call another doctor. <laughs> so he, we don't want, we often don't like the truth. And so we call for, we call for another prophet when the real one begins to challenge us. And we can reject not only the truth, but the truth giver also. And we do this, I like to say, in at least three ways. First, we can reject the message of those prophets who don't conform to our preconceived ideas. Yeah? And that's what Jesus did with his home congregation. Now, uh, those of you who were here last week, you realize we also, last week, we read the beginning of this thing when he, he came to his home congregation in Nazareth, and his population and his uh, reputation had been growing in the, in the neighborhood, in the, in the surrounding neighborhood comes home. But his congregation, when he gets to the home congregation, they say, well, how, how can this guy say anything worthwhile? He was Joseph's son, right? He was the carpenter. He just grew up down the street. How can we learn anything from him? I mean, he never even went to college. What can he teach us? You may have heard the story. There were two monks traveling along the road. And it was raining. It was stormy. And all the roads were muddy. And 
They came into town, they came around this corner, and, and there was this young woman in a beautiful silk kimono with a sash on, and she couldn't get across the street because it was so muddy and all the rain. So one of the monks said, can I help you out, man? And he picks her up, carries her across the street, through the mud, puts her down on the other side, and the two of them go on their way. The other monk didn't say 